Rub up your engines! All right, here we go. As usual, I'm going to talk about a real car owned by a real person. No advertising BS. And this is a 2022 Toyota Cross. And we started selling them in the United States recently. It's a crossover small SUV. Toyota wanted to sell something in between. The RAV4s, which have been great vehicles, cost a lot more than this. He picked this one up recently for like 30 grand in New Jersey. They wanted something more in between. And to me, I find it kind of hilarious because, okay, back in 2007, Toyota Matrix, which actually was originally called Toyota Corolla Matrix, they already had one and then they stopped making them when they didn't make them anymore in Cambridge, Ontario. And then, oh, well, you know, we don't need that. Well, obviously they did because just like the Matrix, this cross is made on a Toyota Corolla platform. They both were. And interestingly enough, this is a very modern vehicle, has a Toyota Dynamic 4 system that we'll explain later. On the highway, this thing gets about 33 miles a gallon and it's a 2022. But my 07 Matrix gets 32 miles a gallon on the highway. And that was what? 15 years earlier. It really hasn't increased the gas mileage that much. Granted, this one has 12 horsepower less than the new one. The new one's a little bit faster. It just goes to show that technology can only go so far with gas mileage. You're squeezing less and less extra gas mileage out of more and more technology. This has a CVT transmission. This has direct fuel injection. All this extremely high technology, and you're only getting one mile per gallon better gas mileage 15 years later than you got on the old Matrix. It just has plain old fuel injection and a regular automatic transmission. Now, I mean, really, you look at the vehicle, Here's the new one, and you can see the 2017 is pretty much the same shape. You know, they're basically hatchbacky type things, four doors, only this one has bigger windows on the back. These are a little bit smaller. Now this also is an all-wheel drive, and he loves it. He's from Jersey. Believe it or not, he came all the way from Jersey to Tennessee. He didn't come to my place in Rhode Island because I'm not there now. <laughs> he drove the whole way. Of course, he didn't have any problems. I mean, these things can run forever if you change the oil every 5,000 miles. But when you have any size SUV, all-wheel drive, they're higher up in the air, so they're less aerodynamic. There's only so much gas mileage you can squeeze out of them. They're kind of getting to the limit of it now if they make drivable cars. You got to keep up with the traffic. I've been to Jersey. People drive like maniacs there too. If you got something they can't get out of it so well, you're going to be rear-ended knocked out of the road. You can make cars that get phenomenal gas mods that have no acceleration at all, but they would be undrivable. So this is a totally drivable car. We'll see where you road test it. They're fun to drive around in. But you're never going to get phenomenal gas mods unless you go to ultimate really high level hybrid or electric stuff that's completely different technology that may or may not prove to work this is a regular gasoline engine it's been proven to last forever it's basically a toyota corolla same frame and everything in engine smaller suv body style and one of the things i like about the style is look they're starting to shrink that gaping mouth. I hated those Lexus ones with the ah, giant open mouth. They're finally realizing maybe people want the grill a little bit smaller and they're tired of that giant home alone face screaming at them every time they look at their car. Now I said I was gonna talk about the engine, I will. It's these dynamic force engines. It has gasoline direct injection to get the best gas mods, the most power you can get out of an engine this size. And it's a decent size too, it's two liter. Of course, they don't have timing belts anymore. There's a metal timing chain that generally lasts forever. Now it is an interesting transmission. Toyota designed and built it themselves. It's got a nice launch gear, so it actually takes off on a regular gear and then it shifts to the CVT. Now you'll see, it's got this crazy thing here where you can put it in drive, or you can go into manual and shift it up and down manually. But how can it be? This thing doesn't have any gears. Well, Toyota engineers are obviously geniuses. They have a CVT transmission, so they've computer programmed it to act like it has gears. It doesn't have anything but the first launch gear that it takes off it. The rest of the gears are just made up gears by computer software, so it feels like it's shifting gears, so it feels more normal to an American driver. But there are no gears other than the takes off in the launch gear, and then the rest of the stuff, it's just pretending to shift it's just changing the power ratio it's not actually shifting gears because there aren't five six seven eight gears no there's just one launch gear and a launch gear is there so it takes off good and it doesn't strain the cvt transmission so it should last quite some time i haven't seen any problems in these yet now as you can see 
It's got the typical Toyota screen here with everything that you want. Shows you the food stuff in the area. You know, you have all kinds of menus you can mess around with. Phone, Apple CarPlay. And they know everybody wants to hook up their stuff, so they have plug-ins and they have wireless charging things on it. And yeah, I'm not a fan of electric parking brakes, but that's what they put in them now. It's a Toyota. I've yet to see one of those break either. It's got push button start. They almost all do push button starts now. It's a Toyota that's going to start up. There it goes. Starts right up. All kinds of controls on a steering wheel. And the seats not only in the front are comfortable. Check out the back. They're contoured too. They're nice seats. And they got some good storage room in the back. You can see even says Corolla Cross. And of course, you can hide it all so people can't see what's inside. That's a big deal these days with thieves. And as we look around, you think of Corolla and economy? No. It's got heating and air conditioning in the back too. The kids to connect their stuff to. Yes cup holders inside the door since this is an all-wheel drive got a difference in the rear and drive shafts in the rear and the front he says it's fantastic he's had four-wheel drive explorer he likes this one even better so the system works better and this comes from a guy who used to demolish buildings for a living until he was inside cleaning one out and his cousin was on a big boom and he knocked it over and ended up breaking his back safety is a paramount concern to this guy now the toyota corolla cross so you know it's going to start. Yeah, we'll back her up. Very good screen for looking while you back up so I don't run into the lions at the end of the driveway. First thing you notice is it's relatively high up in here. You got a good vantage point. And when you step on the gas, it's got good pickup. The GDI injection, now it is a CVT transmission. So when you accelerate it, you're going to get more than normal RPMs that you would in a regular transmission to give it acceleration. And as we go through the twisties, I got to say, it handles quite well. It's one of the better small SUVs that I've ever driven. It doesn't particularly oversteer or understeer. Some people don't like the way the CVTs act. They do get better gas mileage, and they sometimes feel a little bit wonky. Basically, the vehicle is a somewhat smaller RAV4. That's what they wanted. They wanted something that people don't want to pay as much as a RAV4 costs. Most of the things that a RAV4 can do. This is all-wheel drive. You can get RAV4 and all-wheel drive. They're relatively similar. Of course, this is a somewhat smaller engine. Now, it's not a drag racer. We'll get to our little drag strip here to see what it can do. We'll get to the stop, and we'll see how it takes off. All right? Not all that bad with a launch gear. But see how it stays up higher? Generally, these CVTs have to go at pretty high RPMs in order to get really quick acceleration. That's only when you're doing hard acceleration. When you're just cruising, you can see they just go at normal lower RPMs. That's how they get better gas mileage. But then when you have to pass, they've got enough bumps to get you going. And road noise is pretty much what you'd expect. It's in between. The Corollas aren't the quietest vehicles in the world. Of course, you can add insulation if you want them quieter. I mean, I can hear tires and stuff going down the road. Nothing outrageous, but it's not a particularly quiet car. I mean, you want a quiet car, get like a Camry, it's much quieter, has much more insulation, and it's got a bigger wheelbase, too. Previous car was a Corolla, but he got rid of it because it hit stuff on the road, and it destroyed the bottom of the car because it wasn't high enough clearance. So he decided to get this for more clearance. Now, he's a smart guy. He's kind of like me, he said, it's new, I don't know if I trust it. So instead of buying it, he's leasing it presently to see how it likes it. He can always buy it off leases if he wants to, but he wants to try it out. So far, he's really happy. Now, they build these things all over the world. This particular one was put together in the United States, but realize engines and transmissions, all that stuff comes from Japan. Heck, I had an old Toyota Camry station wagon in the 90s. It was made in Kentucky. It didn't have any particular problems. Engine, transmission, everything came from Japan, and it worked perfectly fine. We had it for years and years and years, and I only paid three grand for it used. Of course, it's got good brakes. We'll hit the brakes pretty hard here. The ABS works fine. It stops. No problems. I just want to stop too fast here because I don't want to be rear-ended by a Yukon. The guy might be on his phone. I don't know. <laughs> now, even though it's somewhat high up in the air being a crossover SUV, it still doesn't feel particularly top-heavy. Taking the twisties, they're kind of fun in this thing. And on smooth roads, it's perfectly smooth. And I do have to say, in the 15 years between my Toyota Matrix and this thing, which is basically the replacement for it. The suspension of this is infinitely superior to my Matrix. Now, the Matrix handles fine. That's no problem. The problem is it rides somewhat rough, and this rides a lot smoother. You figure they'd do something in all those years, and they have. But like I say, don't expect phenomenal gas mileage. Here's the best gas mileage that it's gotten so far. 24.3 
city highway combined and of course that's partly due because it's all-wheel drive if you do not need all-wheel drive don't buy it you'll get a lot better gas mileage in the real world forget the ratings the ratings don't mean all that much and when you consider this car has all the modern gas saving things like the steering is electric power steering there's no hydraulic pump got gasoline direct injection a cvt transmission it just kind of proves my point that i said for years don't expect to get great gas mileage in any suv no matter what size it is They're high up in the air They're not aerodynamic it's all-wheel drive so there's more friction there's more weight and it will get lower gas mileage so what do i think about this cross well pretty much the name says it's all it's a corolla cross it's pretty much the legendary toyota corolla frame engine put into a crossover suv body i still laugh at why did toyota stop making the same thing the toyota matrix is exactly the same thing i must have been tired of people saying how come you're getting rid of a car and then bringing it back you're getting rid of the venza then you're bringing it back and i guess they decided they didn't like that anymore so they decided to call it toyota corolla cross instead of matrix what's in a name it's a toyota corolla it's got four doors all-wheel drive probably will run forever and even with this new technology although as i said the man's like me he didn't want to take a chance it's new i don't know so he's leasing the thing we'll know years from now he can tell us if he's bought it or if he leased something else he made a smart choice of what to test out i gotta say that the corollas 50 million of them whatever that they sold if you don't like noise and you want more accoutrements well then go up to a rav4 but you're gonna pay a lot more he just bought this in this crazy coronavirus insane car price stuff a short time ago you're gonna pay a lot more i've seen people pay 45 for a rav4 so do you really want to pay all that money out extra for a few amenities for me this thing would be the perfect car for driving around the country i mean let's face it everybody doesn't need something that can hold nine passengers this can easily hold a lot of people it's got plenty of utilities to it. it's got all the technology that modern cars have contrary to these fantasy people in the sky that say we're all going to be driving electric cars tomorrow i think there's going to be gasoline around for quite some time for most americans so if you never want to miss another one of my new car repair videos Remember to ring that bell!